Welcome to With One Accord, presented by the Houston Chamber Choir each Monday and Friday to renew and refresh us through the power of choral music. I'm Robert Simpson, founder and artistic director. While the COVID period will always be associated with cancellations and shutdowns, it must also be remembered as a time of enormous resilience and creativity. A perfect example of this imaginative and enterprising spirit can be found in today's guest, the multi-Grammy award-winning new music ensemble, The Crossing. For months, they prepared a gift of music and reflection, rising with The Crossing, that arrived each day at sunrise. Even in good times, producing four CDs in one year is rare, but that's what they've done since March 2020, adding to their impressive catalog of 23 releases. We'll be hearing about their latest recording in just a minute. But none of this should come as a surprise. The Crossing has been at the forefront of innovation since its founding in 2005 by artistic director Donald Nally. Donald's quest to search below the conventional to the power of choral music to address social, environmental, and political issues has led to collaborations with today's new music leaders, 110 commissions, and a string of unique performances at Lincoln Center, the Kennedy Center, Walt Disney Concert Hall with the L.A. Philharmonic, and in 2013, even an appearance with the Rolling Stones. Each summer, they return to the Warren Miller Performing Arts Center in Big Sky, Montana, where they are working on an extensive multi-year project with composer Michael Gordon and filmmaker Bill Morrison. This torrent of creativity is the product of the relentless drive of artistic director Donald Nally, who since 2012 has also served as director of choral organizations at Northwestern University. Previously, Donald had distinguished tenures as chorus master for Lyric Opera of Chicago, Welsh National Opera, Opera Philadelphia, and for many seasons at the Spoleto Festival in Italy. The only conductor to receive Chorus America's prestigious Margaret Hillis Award with two ensembles, he has also been awarded their Louis Botto Award for Innovative Action and Entrepreneurial Zeal, and the Michael Korn Founders Award for the Development of the Professional Choral Art. Claire Chase, flutist, new music champion, and MacArthur Fellowship winner, says Donald is that unicorn artistic director in that he's as down-to-earth as he is visionary and as driven as he is reflective and humble and as curious as he is ambitious. Here's Donald to introduce a very special piece The Crossing will perform for us. Hello from Philadelphia. And thank you to Bob and the Houston Chamber Choir for having me and The Crossing as your guests today. And I'm really honored and privileged and looking forward to a quick introduction to a new work that was just released as an album on Friday. This is Gavin Breyer's A Native Hill, based on Wendell Berry's 1968 essay of the same name. It was written by Gavin as a gift to The Crossing. It's a 70-minute unaccompanied work. It's very challenging. It's also incredibly beautiful, and we are so, so fortunate. He wrote it as a follow-up to his first piece that he wrote for us, which is a 40-minute piece based on the writings of Thomas Traherne called The Fifth Century, and that piece was written for a prism saxophone quartet and The Crossing. As I said, this one is unaccompanied. And we're going to listen to the 12th and final movement of it called At Peace. It's about a 10-minute work, and I appreciate <laughs> allowing for a 10-minute piece. We don't have a lot of shorter works, and so I really wanted to share this partly because, obviously, it's a big event for us when we release an album. And this one is very special because of our relationship with Gavin. He's really gotten to know us. He's really gotten to know our voices very intimately. And we're aware of that when we're singing this piece. We, we know he's thinking originally about us and our personality and the things that we do well, and perhaps the things that we don't. I'm not sure. So A Native Hill takes 12 different vignettes. There's a walk in the woods with a dog. There's a rumination on animals and birds. And it looks at how the landscape is changed by human beings. It also looks at how the landscape recovers from human beings. Now, this is Wendell Berry 
not the activist environmentalist Wendell Berry of recent years, where he's really, really outspoken about the government and about our curation of the earth, but rather the kind of rural connection Wendell Berry, who you can feel the activism underneath it in terms of his reverence for the earth and nature in general, and his understanding of our relationship to it and what we do with it that's positive and negative. And that's all in this text and the excerpts that Gavin cut out to make up his libretto. So this final movement comes about an hour into the work. It's for 24 voices, literally 24 voices, because you're going to hear at the very beginning, there is a 24 voice chord. There's actually three of them in succession before this line, I have been walking in the woods, kind of emerges out of it. And I'm going to read quickly the text for you because I, I think it's really important. The piece is written in a way that you can't always tell exactly what the text is because, well, it becomes very pastoral in some ways. Um, but the notes are very elongated at times and the atmosphere and environment sometimes supersedes the actual word itself. So this is at peace from Wendell Berry. I have been walking in the woods and have lain down on the ground to rest. And now a leaf spiraling down in wild flight lands on my shirt. At first I am bemused and mystified by the coincidence that the leaf should have been so hung, weighted, and shaped, so ready to fall, so nudged loose and slanted by the breeze, as to fall where I, by the same delicacy of circumstance, happen to be lying. And suddenly I apprehend in it the dark proposal of the ground. Under the fallen leaf, my breastbone burns with imminent decay. Other leaves fall. My body begins its long shudder into humus. I feel my substance escape me, carried into the mold by beetles and worms. Days, winds, and seasons pass over me as I sink under the leaves. For a time... Only sight is left me, a passive awareness of the sky overhead, birds crossing, the mazed interreaching of the treetops, the leaves falling, and then that too sinks away. It is acceptable to me, and I am at peace. When I move to go, it is as though I rise up out of the world. I think the last five minutes of this piece are some of the best five minutes that The Crossing has recorded. The music is incredibly inspiring, and we really embrace Gavin embracing Wendell Berry's acceptance and momentary understanding, you know, momentarily making sense of the chaos. So that is my introduction to the final movement of A Native Hill. As I said, you can learn more about it at crossingchoir.org. And of course, as I said, it came out on Friday, and we're really, really pleased that we can introduce it here. Thank you so much for having me. I really wish I could be there in person, but this is the next best thing.
The Houston Chamber Choirs with One Accord is your one-stop shop for choral joy. If you enjoyed this podcast, help us to continue our mission to grow the esteem and appreciation of choral music by sharing, reviewing, and subscribing to our content. As a 501c3 nonprofit, support from listeners like you allows us to continue making new and exciting programming. For more information about us and how you can support our work, please visit HoustonChamberChoir.org give.